What's up, buddy? It's Nick here, and today I'm replacing the fuel pump on my truck because basically I was cruising home one day and I felt the truck kind of bogged down, but I didn't think much of it. I gave it a little rev and it went back to normal. And as I was coasting down a hill, my RPMs got really low, and as I was pulling off into a parking spot to stop to check my fuel pressure because I have that gauge, everything just kind of died and uh, the fuel pump stopped priming. Now, it was actually kind of funny. I'm glad I carburetor swapped it because we were able to limp it home by simply just gravity feeding gas into the carburetor. You know, you hook up your fuel line, you run it to a gas can, you let gravity do the work. It actually ran great. Great. So with it here at a place we can work with it, the first thing you always want to do is disconnect your negative terminal. This just makes sure if you accidentally ground something out, it's not going to spark and potentially ignite your gasoline. So typically what you want to do is empty out as much of the gas as possible. Mine actually had an anti-siphon system in it, so the only way we could actually siphon gas out was to disconnect the filler tube. And while we were up there, we also disconnected the filler neck vent tube as well. So once we had the filler neck off, it was time to get my little hand pump. Just stick the in tube into the gas tank and then stick the out tube into an empty gas can and begin pumping the gas out. So next up, we just have to begin disconnecting everything everything that holds the tank to my truck. Starting with the gas tank straps, we supported the gas tank by using a floor jack and a piece of wood to evenly distribute the weight. And then with my trusty Milwaukee impact gun, the rusty bolts came off with almost zero fight. Oh yeah, it's coming off. Out. The strap that holds the front of the tank was actually a bit more complicated because there's an extra four bolts that hold the strap to the frame. This strap actually goes up over the tank, unlike the other one which just wraps around the bottom of the tank. This four bolt was in a tight spot, so neither impact gun could get in there to loosen it, so it had to be done by hand. Once the gas tank strips were undone, it was time to lower down the tank. You want to slowly do this because we still have fuel lines, vent tubes, and wiring harnesses connected to the tank, and if we just drop it, then those will get damaged. And as you can see, I have two fuel lines, a feed line and a return line. The fuel lines just use a flare nut. There's a male and a female and you want to get a wrench on both of those and they should turn plus there's a three prong wiring harness and there's a ground strap that goes to the frame there's also a small line that goes to some sort of charcoal canister basically an early version of an evap system you want to just take that off then there's the vent tube that goes to the pump which is just a hose clamp once all that is disconnected, we can just lower the tank down and then we can slide it out from underneath the truck. To assist us in removing the old pump, we sprayed the top with some WD-40 to help loosen any rust. Then to actually get the pump out, there's this lock ring on the top and you have to turn that enough so the pump will get freed. Again, mine was pretty rusty, so it took some prying to get it free when the lock ring was spun out of the way. And in the process of actually taking the pump out, chances are you got some dirt or some rust in the tanks. So make sure you clean that out to keep your fuel system clean. We also cleaned up the mating surface beneath the pump because there is a rubber o-ring that's supposed to go there. Make sure the o-ring actually is installed beneath the pump. It should be right here. We then grease the area for the locking ring so that way next time it shouldn't be as difficult to remove. To tighten the lock ring, we used a similar method to get it off, just instead we hit it the opposite direction to lock the fuel pump in place. We then reconnected this vent too because with the tank out of the truck, it'll just be easier overall. To actually reinstall the tank, it's the opposite of removing it. We did put some silicone paste in the electrical connector just to help keep water out of the wiring so we can keep a nice clean connection. To reconnect the wiring, push the plug in till it clicks. Then we can reconnect the fuel lines. We did paint the fuel lines along with the top of the tank because I do live in the rust belt and any exposed metal is an issue waiting to happen. Luckily with these fuel lines, you can't mix them up because they are different sized threads. The feed line will not go in the return line and vice versa. Make sure you reconnect the evap tube. Next, reconnect the ground strap. First, we did clean the spot in the frame so that way we can have a nice strong ground connection. Now is the fun part of resecuring the gas tank. Start by positioning the tank at the right height so it's easiest for you. Then start to finesse this strap into the hole in the frame. This step actually did take a while just because the straps can be a pain to get back in. It's just the nature of them. The rear one was actually relatively easy compared to the front one which has those four bolts in the frame. Once we got both straps back in, it was time to tighten up all six of the nuts and bolts.
Then we had to reconnect the filler neck and the vent tube. This was also a pain because over the years, they do tend to shrink. And since we disconnected them to drop the tank, they were not quite as long as before. So it took a lot of stretching to get them back to where they belonged. And before we go turn on the key to prime the fuel pump, we have to refill this with gasoline because right now it's pretty much on E. And obviously if we ran the pump, the only thing that keeps the pump lubricated is gasoline. So it would probably burn up and damage our brand new fuel pump. Now for the funny part of this whole repair is that the fuse was actually blown. So this was our culprit. We come over here. Now first we did check this fuel pump relay to make sure it was clicking and it was and then scanning this there was nothing immediately that said fuel pump but if you look right here there's an ECMB fuse which is this one right here so that was causing our fuel pump not to run so now why did the fuse actually blow I mean as you can see this pump is definitely well used this is supposed to be white along with this so it's definitely been in there a while these fuel lines are super crispy and this truck did sit for a while so basically what might happen is sometimes these develop a hot spot after using some really bad gasoline or running it on E they'll develop a hot spot which won't immediately show itself just because it's not a big deal I mean it's definitely damaged to the pump but it'll still pump fuel but what might have happened was this pump has been weak for a while and uh, my carburetor swap actually might have fixed the issue because the carburetor requires 5 psi of fuel and then finally after all this time that hot spot became a big enough issue to the point where it caused a voltage problem and the fuse might have blown so that's kind of my reason to try to justify the money I spent on a fuel pump just to try to help me feel a little bit better about my purchase I mean at least now I'm not questioning how old the fuel pump is so it's like a brand new fuel pump so it should last a while so it kind of just helps boost the confidence a little bit but that's it for me guys thank you all for watching the video i will see you guys next time make sure to like subscribe if you are new check the description below for all my social media so you can see where to follow me there and get updates i'll catch you guys next time peace out